Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Hope everybody's okay. Love to everybody. Uh, we have a service um, on uh, Sunday afternoon at um, in Manchester uh, at my home uh, communion service, and we've had a really nice service this afternoon. And also, there's a service in Manchester. Um, and uh, if you're interested, if you're in Manchester, you like to come to these services, let me know and. Um, I'll give you my phone number, you can phone me up and uh, we c I can tell you the details about that. Okay. Uh, this is a message that I gave at the communion service today, so I'm going to just preach it um, and I hope it's going to be a blessing to you. Okay, let's come before the Lord and ask His blessings. Dear Father God, we thank you that you are our God and we give you the praise and the glory. We thank you that the Lord Jesus made a way so that we could come into thy presence and so Father we pray in his name that you be pleased to bless us now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory Lord please may the Holy Spirit be with us now Amen Amen so we're looking at Psalm 55 if you'd like to turn to Psalm 55 so I'll just wait a minute if you could get your Bible out, it'd be good if you could follow what I'm saying, okay? <coughs> so Psalm 55, it says, Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught. At the voice of the enemy, at the st stairs of the wicked, for they bring down suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me, the terrors of death assail me, fear and trembling have beset me, horror has overwhelmed me. I said all oh, that I had wings of a dove, and I would fly away, be at rest, I would flee far away and say in the desert, I would hurry in my place of shelter far from the tempest and storm. Confuse the wicked, O Lord, confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city, day and night they prowl about on its walls, malice and abuse are within me, destructive forces are at work in the city, threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship, as we walked with the throng at the house of God. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the grave, for evil finds lodging among them. But I call to God, and the Lord save me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress. And he hears my voice, and he ransoms me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though may many oppress me, oppose me. God, who enthroned forever, will hear them and afflict them. Men who never change their ways and have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends, he violates his covenant, his speech is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. But you, O God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of corruption. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men will not live out half their days but as for me I will trust in you this is a wonderful psalm um, tremendous I'm a bit tired because I, I preached this already so I'm a little bit tired so forgive me but uh, it's a great psalm and uh, I hope you're going to be blessed by listening to this message tonight first of all the cry from the heart Psalm 55 verse 1 Notice the cry of the heart of the psalmist Listen to my prayer, O God Do not ignore my plea Hear me and answer me My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught At the voice of the many, at the snares of the wicked For they bring down suffering upon me And revile me in their anger Verse 4 My heart is in anguish within me The terrors of death assail me So is his heart's in anguish. He's really in anguish in his prayer. 
I said, verse 6, all that I had wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. He wants to get away from the problem of the anguish that's in his life. Have you noticed something that some issue in his life is causing him distress? It's, it's people around him that are causing the distress in his life. And in his distress, he looks up to God and cries out to God about that distress. Background to this psalm, one writer said, the psalm is a prayer for God's help when when, uh, sorry, a prayer for God's help when, uh, I can't read my handwriting, sorry. Uh, the writer's basically saying that the psalmist is about a prayer for God's help when a powerful conspiracy in Jerusalem under the leadership of a former friend comes against him. That's the background. And in your anguish, in your suffering, in your difficulty where people seem to be oppressing you, there is a hope. Psalm 27 verse 9. says do not hide your face from me do not turn your servant away in anger you have been my helper do not reject me or forsake me O God my saviour you see when the psalmist was in anguish by the oppression of people he goes to God and he seeks God and believes in God is going to be his helper notice the psalmist doesn't lash out the psalmist has got people oppressing him the psalmist doesn't lash out and attack the people physically instead he flees to the presence of God for the protection and help that he needs and it's kind of like this imagine you've got a boat on a on a uh, a beautiful uh, tropical island and there's a boat there and you're in you're in uh, diving equipment and you dive under the boat and under the boat is a cage for you to be protected against any attacks by sharks and as you're under the water and in the cage, <coughs> you have a harpoon, a small rifle kind of harpoon with you. And a great white shark comes, but you go out of the cage and you go and attack the white shark. Now is that wise? Would it not be better, if the shark is going to attack you, would it not be better to get back in that protective cage where you're going to be safe? And the psalmist here has been attacked by people. The oppression of God's people is coming upon him. But he flees to God. His cage, his protection against the sharks of people is God. And he goes into the presence of God. And he cries out to God. And he asks God for that protection and help that he needs. God, I put in my notes, will not let you down. He knows what you're going through and will help you. Stay close to him in prayer. Stay close to God in prayer. Okay? The cry from the heart. Secondly, the betrayal of a friend. The betrayal of a friend. Psalm 55 verse 12 and 14. If any man were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship as we walked with the throng in the house of God. God, uh, sorry, that, that David, the psalmist, was betrayed by a close friend. Is that the same with you? Is someone in your life who's been close to you, betrayed you, or continues to hurt you in some way, and is causing you deep distress? Let us turn to John 13:21. John thirteen twenty one. 
After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. Verse 26, Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this place of bread when I have dipped it in the dish, the dipping, the piece of bread. He gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. And you know what happened? Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. He sold his information about Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. So what do we learn from those lessons? Well, first of all, God is not taken by surprise. You know, God, Jesus Christ, was not taken by surprise by the betrayal of Judas. It, he already knew what was going to happen. And God's not taken by surprise when you have been betrayed. You might be shocked by the betrayal. Whoever's betrayed you might have made you feel, what a shocking thing's happened to me, and I'm in shock at the pain that these people or this person's caused me. God was not taken by surprise. God knew it was going to happen. God foresaw it. Okay, he's not taken by surprise. Secondly, the Lord Jesus Christ, when Judas betrayed him, it was in the plan of God. God was over all and was using the betrayal of Judas to bless his son and to bless the people of God. Did you get that? The betrayal of Judas was in the plan of God so that the people of God would be blessed. And the same is with you. The betrayal that has happened to you is in the plan of God where God is going to use it to bless you and his people. God is over your betrayal. He knew it was going to happen and it's in his plan and he's using that betrayal so that you will draw closer to him and learn the lessons that he wants you to know. The lessons about yourself, the lessons about God, the lessons about other people. God is teaching you, learning you about him through this betrayal that has happened to you. And if you allow this betrayal to work his purposes out in your life, God will bring it to a blessing, even though it's painful today. So God is over your trial, is over your betrayal, and he has a plan for your betrayal in that he wants to use it for a blessing in your life and other people's lives. So in other words, what is ever, whatever has taken you by surprise in the betrayal that has happened to you, I'm sorry about that, I'll just let it ring, I'll have to ring back later. So whatever betrayal that has happened to you, God is over it and he's working his purposes in your life. So we've looked at the cry from the heart, the betrayal of a friend. And then thirdly and finally, the care of God. Psalm 55, verse 22 Cast your care on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Cast your care up on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. That's really encouraging, isn't it? To cast your burdens on the Lord. There's an old story of about a village preacher who was moving his books from downstairs to upstairs. He had a big library of books and he was moving them from downstairs to upstairs. And he had a five-year-old son. And the five-year-old son got some of the big books and tried to carry them and was carrying one big book and it got to the stir bottom of the stairs and collapsed in a heap and started to cry because the five-year-old son couldn't carry the, the, the big book. But the father came down the stairs, picked up the son, put him in his arms, carried the book, and took him upstairs. And that's a picture of you and me. You, you're bogged down with your burden, and you can't cope with it. Maybe you can't cope with the betrayal. Well, it's time to put your betrayal in the hands of God and say, Lord, I've been betrayed. 
I give you the pain, the suffering and the hurt and the persecution, whatever it is I give it to you Lord and I trust it's in your hands and then God just like the man, the father would pick up his son and carry him up the stairs God will take that burden off you and he will carry it it will no longer be a burden to you for God will carry it for you and he will do it with love and he will do it carrying you up the stairs of life Psalm 18 verse 35 Psalm 18 35 We read You give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me You stoop down to make me great God makes you great God is the one that will lift you up However low you've gone, however down you've been, it's not men who put you down, and it's not men who lift you up. It's God who puts you down, and it's God who lifts you up. God is with you right now, and in due time he will lift you up, okay? So don't be discouraged. If you turn to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him. Now, let's see what I've got in my pocket. i got some money here. Okay. It's just 60, 70 pence. It's all in my hand and I put all that money in this hand and I carry it in this hand and this hand's free but imagine this is your burden all your burdens here it says cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you so all this here is your anxiety your worries and here's God and you put all your anxieties into his hands and you let him carry the burden. Stop carrying that burden. Let God carry the burden. Stop worrying. And start letting God carry that burden for you. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25. God is good. Matthew 6 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life important than food, and the body uh, more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labour or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his splendour, was dressed like one of these. That is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, or you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear, or what the pagans run after? These things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. The care of God in Psalm 52, 55, 22 is a God who wants to take your burdens and carry them. In the Matthew passage we see a God our Lord Jesus Christ saying that he looks after the birds and he looks after the flowers and if he looks after them will he not look after you and God wants you to not be worried anymore to not be distressed to, he doesn't want you to be full of anxiety anymore he wants you to be anxiety free so in Psalm 55 verse 22 it says cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you you will never let the righteous fall. Will you do that today? Whoever's betrayed you, you have carried a burden. 
may be a burden of anger, a burden of guilt, a burden of worrying about the future, many, many burdens and anxieties through the person who betrayed you. But God wants you to know that when you're crying out, don't lash out at other people. Turn to Him. When that person has failed you or betrayed you, God wants you to know that God is sovereign over it. He's in control. God will lift you up in His time. And you have to trust in Him. And God understands your betrayal. And God can use and is using your, the betrayal for His plans and purposes to bless other people. And thirdly, God wants you to stop worrying now. You've been worrying far too much for too, too long. Carrying too many burdens and too many anxieties. And God wants you to stop that. He wants you to be happy and at peace and know that whatever happens, God will carry your burden. He loves you and he's with you right now. Okay. I hope that's a blessing to you. And... Um, Let's focus our attention upon God. I'm going to just be quiet for a moment and then I'm going to read this song and offer a prayer. So let's just be quiet and use it as a time of fixing our eyes upon God. Okay, it says, Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Walking or sleeping, thy presence my life. Be thou my wisdom, thou my true word. I ever with thee, thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee one. High King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach Heaven's joy, O bright Heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Let's close in prayer. Lord, when we're oppressed by other people, help us to look to you and seek your protection. Lord, whenever we be are betrayed by people, help us to see you're still in control. And we'll use that betrayal to make us a better people and to bless others. And Father, help us to realize that whatever anxieties we carry, we don't have to carry them. But we can hand them over to you. And you as a loving Father will carry our burdens. Father, thank you for these truths. Help us to live in the light of them each day. Those who have listened today. Bless this message and may it be an encouragement to them for your glory and honour. So Lord, I thank you that we can look forward to a new day where you are with us and we know we are secure in you. God bless you, Father. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Give you the praise and the glory, Lord. We honour you, Lord. We magnify your name. You are our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Amen. Sorry about that, I was just a bit tired when I said, God bless you, Father. You know, God is, is God, and I uh, just a bit tired there, uh, so forgive me for that. So, I hope that's been a blessing to you. Um, please come along uh, to the church, it's Piccadilly Gardens Community Church, uh, on a Sunday. Uh, around about 5 p.m. and um, 11, 11 a.m. in the morning on Sunday in Manchester um, and also there is a Bible study on a Friday night 6 p.m. in Manchester if you want to know the details I'll give you the fo my phone number and then you can ring me and I'll give you the details of where these studies are please come along if you need encouraging what are you going to find you're going to find find compassionate conservatism conservative evangelicalism with a, with a compassionate heart that's what we'll be offering to you we'll be offering you Christ and the full word of God with genuine commitment and care 
and I hope that will be a blessing to you. If you're not going to come along, don't worry. Pray for us. Pray that the work will go forward and uh, we would see people saved and that God will be glorified in Manchester. It's a tough job because there's a lot of there's a lot of funny teaching in Manchester at the moment. <laughs> it's very, very difficult to steer in the Word of God and, and protect people from all the different movements and weird things that are happening today in the church. So it's a massive task and um, we'll need your prayers. But also, um, you know, pray about getting involved in a church plan. If you're tired of just staying in church and sick of seeing the same things happen you want something where it's radical radical Christianity but not not extreme to the point where there's no love but you want to see radical Christianity in action radical love radical preaching radical service then why not come because this is going to be a radical thing and I would love you to come and especially if you want to get involved in leadership in, in, in serving the Lord uh, we would love to have you. Okay. So take care and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and rest of the following week. And I'll see you whenever I see you. Um, so take care. God bless.